Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves you, the Bible tells us so. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Oh yes, the Bible tells us so, doesn't it? That Jesus loves us. Went to the cross, took all of our sin upon him, Paid our price on the cross for forgiveness. And now we can have a relationship with him and with our Father coming through him. So that's the good news that we carry in our spirits and in our hearts, isn't it? Welcome to today's reading of the Word of God on August 13. August 13, we are in Nehemiah. Chapter 5, picking up with verse 14. Nehemiah 5, picking up with verse 14. Let me have a good hot sip here, and then let's begin to read. Mm -mm -mm. Did you know that Earth thinks that she is preparing for a war? But what we really know is heaven is preparing for a wedding. And you and I have a place at the table. Nehemiah chapter four, picking up with or chapter five, picking up with verse 14. Moreover, from the time that I, Nehemiah, was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year until the 32nd year of King Artaxerxes, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's provisions. But the former governors who were before me laid burdens on the people and took from them bread and wine, besides 40 shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people. But I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I also continued the work on this wall, and we did not buy any land. All my servants were gathered there for the work, and at my table were 150 Jews and rulers besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Can you imagine? At his table. Had to be a lot of tables, I would think. 150 Jews. Now that which was prepared daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowl were prepared for me, and once every ten days an abundance of all kinds of wine. Yet in spite of this, I did not demand the governor's provisions, because the bondage was heavy on this people. <clears throat> and you know, reading that list of the food doesn't sound like much to me. How about you? For 150 people? Remember me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. And we move right along to chapter 6 of Nehemiah. 
Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors in the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? <clears throat> but they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. And then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before, the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, and just listen to this, <laughs> It is reported among the nations, and Gershom says, that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. <clears throat> so they've concocted an even bigger lie, haven't they? And then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. And afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delaiah, the son of Mehedabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these their works, and the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who would have me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. They repaired that whole wall in 52 days. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things that they were very disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came to them. For many in Judah were pledged to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Arach, and his son, Jehohanan, had married the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berakiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me, 
and reported my words to him. Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. <clears throat> and we move right along to chapter 7. And then it was when the wall was built and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the leader of the citadel. For he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, do not let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. And while they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station and another in front of his own house. Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few and the houses were not rebuilt. And then my God put it into my heart to gather the nobles, the rulers, and the people that they might be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return and found written in it these are the people of the province who came back from the captivity of those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his city. Those who came with Zerubbabel were Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramaiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Misperet, Bigvi, Nahum, and Bana. And the number of the men of the people of Israel, the sons of Perash, 2,172. The sons of Shephatiah, 372. The sons of Ara, 600 and 52, the sons of Pahath Moab, of the sons of Yeshua and Joab, 2,818, the sons of Elam, 1,254, the sons of Zatu, 845, the sons of Zaki, 760, the sons of Benoi, 648, the sons of Bibi, 628, the sons of Asgad, 2,321, the sons of Adonikam, 667, the sons of Bigvi, 2,067. The sons of Adin, 655. The sons of Atter of Hezekiah, 98. The sons of Hashum, 328. The sons of Bezai, 324. The sons of Harep, 112. The sons of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Netunha. Excuse me, let me look at that better. Neptoha, 188. The men of Anatoth, 128. The men of Beit Asmavet, 42. The men of Kiria Yeraim, Cheparach, Berot, 700. And 43. The men of Rama and Giba, <clears throat> 621. The men of Michmash, 122. The men of Bethel and Ai, 123. The men of the other Nebu, 52. The sons of the other Elam, 
1,254. The sons of Harim, 320. The sons of Jericho, 345. The sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. The sons of Senach, 3,930. The priests, the sons of Jedaiah, of the house of Yeshua, 973. The sons of Immer, 1,052. The sons of Pasher, 1,247. The sons of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the sons of Yeshua of Cadmiel, and of the sons of Chodva, 74. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Atar, the sons of Talman, the sons of Akub, the sons of Hatata, the sons of Shobai, 138. The Nephaim, the sons of Ziha. Now it keeps saying the sons of. And so I'm just going to read the list of the names, okay? These are the helpers. The sons of Hashupa, Taboa, Keros, Sia, Padon, Lebana, Hagaba, Salmai, Hanan, Gedel, Gahar, Rei, Rezin, Nekoda, Gazam, Uza, Pasia, Besai, Menoim, Nepafashim, Bakbuk, Hakapa, Harhar, Baslit, Mahida, Marsha, Barkos, Sisera, Tama, Neziah, Hatapa, all of those sons. Now the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Shotai, Soparet, Perida, Yala, Darkon, Gedel, Shepatiah, Hatil, Pocherah of Zabaim, the sons of Ammon, Nethanim, and the sons of Solomon's servant were 392. And these were the ones who came up from Tel Mela, Tel Harsha, Cherub, Adon, and Immer, but they could not identify their father's house, nor their lineage, whether they were of Israel, the sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, Nekoda, 642, and the priests, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Koz, the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite, and was called by their name. These sought their listing among those who were registered by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Urim and the Thummim. Somehow, that would tell the answer from the Lord. <clears throat> Altogether, the whole assembly was 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337. And they had 245 men and women singers. Their horses were 736, their mules 245, their camels 435, and donkeys 6,720. And some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 basins, and 530 priestly garments. 
some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the treasury of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minas. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minas, and 67 priestly garments. <clears throat> so the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the Nethanim, and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Just imagine that. Everybody, pack up, who had a heart to work, who had a heart to really turn this issue around. Wow. That is really something. We move right along now to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And Paul continues with his teaching. Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is no other God but one for even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we live. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some, with consciousness of the idol, until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. But beware, lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, <clears throat> will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge, <clears throat> shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Wow. <clears throat> That's getting down to the bottom of the line, isn't it? Because everybody's going to listen to what you have to say about them eating. Because we are big eaters, aren't we? Let's move right along now to Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. 
plays skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> hallelujah, isn't that just beautiful? The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. So we're included in all that, aren't we? And we wrap it all up today on this beautiful brand new day with Proverbs 21, <clears throat> verses 8 through 10. Proverbs 21, 8 through 10. The way of a guilty man is perverse. But as for the pure, his work is right. Better to dwell in the corner of a house stop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. Isn't that something? Wow. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. Very bold, the word of God. So, Let's you and I take it all in and apply it to our lives this day. Let's pray. Precious Father God, we come before you today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the one who took our sins. He is the one who came down out of the glories of heaven, your precious heaven, and went to the cross, took the beating, took the nails, took the spear in his side, and painfully, painfully hung there and bled until he cried, it is finished, and then he died. Father God, we remind ourselves of this great, great thing, this great exchange we should have hung on the cross. But we want to thank you, Jesus, that you went and did it for us. Once and for all, it never needs to be done again. When you cried it is finished, that was it. And we were freed from the old bondage of the old life. And now we can have a new life in you. Isn't that just awesome, Lord? Oh, it's so awesome to me. I can't thank you enough, Lord. I can't thank you enough. I will store that in my heart, what you did for me, and walk in that today. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. We pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem, your wonderful city. We hold her up to you, Lord. And we pray that this day there will be peace within her walls, within all the boundaries of the city. And we thank you, Lord, for how you are making it possible for all of your people across this earth, all of your Jews, your sons, your daughters, to come back. The time is now. For years, they couldn't. Even when they tried, it just didn't work out. But Lord, now, now you have opened the pathway. You have opened the doors of Jerusalem. You have opened the entire country. And there's more land to be added in the coming days whenever your plan is supposed to work out. They don't have it all yet, but you have declared they will. And so, Father, we hold them up to you. And we pray for all of those, Lord, who are packing up like we read of years ago in today's reading. We pray for those, Lord, who will enact the same thing, pack up and come home to live on the land you have allotted to them. Such exciting days, Lord. Thank you that we live in this time to see it. We give you praise and glory. Your ways are countless. They're countless to do it. We bless you for it, Lord. We pray for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and the ruling body, the Knesset. And we'd ask, Lord, that they would perform your work, that they would hear and know what you want them to do today on this first day of their week. Precious Lord, cause them to get very serious about their God, our God. Take their jobs and their responsibilities very seriously. Precious Lord, renew each and every one of them who feel very tired, very worn out. Renew their spirits and their bodies and their minds, precious Father God, that they feel renewed, that they can go and do a wonderful job. We bless you for it. We bless you for it. The day is already far spent for them in Israel. But we lift them up, and we lift them up to you. Father God, I lift up America to you, and I'd ask, Lord, that you would bring righteousness once again, that you would keep putting evil down, keep putting evil people down, according to to your explanation of evil. Precious God, let righteousness begin to be seen and heard and performed in the public and inside homes, inside buildings and jobs, inside Washington, D.C., inside our White House. Precious God, we're asking that evil be put out and righteousness be brought in. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. Lord, I'd ask that you'd hear the prayers of all of your sons and daughters who are here today, who have prayers to you. Precious Father God, you know their hearts you know the situations on their minds. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would increase the answers to come, that you would bring all of the people who do not know you yet, who they are praying for. 
and bring them, Lord, speedily. Bring them. We'd ask, Lord, that you would bless our children and our grandchildren, that you would keep angels around them and protect them from all evil, that you would go with them to school, to college, to their jobs, and be with them there. And all of God's people continued on with your own prayers. And I agree with each and every one of them, and I will go back and read what you write. But we also know there are many that you keep in your heart and that are not written, but we identify with you and we hold you up and we encourage you to stay, to be joyful in the Lord. Just decide to be, no matter what you feel like, decide to be joyful and sing a new song unto him. I love you all so very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.